13, a capital murder suspect skipped out of his sentencing earlier this week and is now on the run with a warrant out for his arrest. The suspect has repeatedly violated his bond and it has taken six years to prosecute him. ABC 13's Brooke Taylor has been digging into records to find out what went wrong here. She joins us now live. That's right. He was supposed to show up to court here on Monday uh, for his sentencing just days after he pleaded guilty. Now, instead, sources tell me that he ripped off his ankle monitor and he has been on the run since at this hour. They have no idea where he is. Elvio Mancibo, a capital murder suspect, should be behind bars right now, but instead he's nowhere to be found. In 2017, officials say the then 19-year-old was involved in a robbery and shot and killed two people. Mancibo was charged with capital murder, his bond set at $325,000. We counted four bond violation reports throughout the years. Failure to comply with curfew, testing positive for drugs, and an assault charge on a family member that was later dismissed. At one point, the district attorney's office filed a motion to take away his bond. A spokesperson tells me they couldn't prove he violated those bond conditions because they were unable to fly out a witness and a urine sample was lost. That's when Judge Anna Martinez raised the bond to $750,000, but he still posted it, remaining on the streets. At this point, for more than five years after he was originally charged, president of the Harris County Criminal Lawyers Association, Murray Newman, looked into this case. If this person who's a capital murder suspect and is violating their bond repeatedly, if they are not getting their bond revoked, who's getting their bond revoked? The most frequent no-brainer reason that you see someone get their bond revoked is that they picked up a new criminal offense, and that is the case on this Mr. Mancibo. Um, a lot of times for things like they tested positive for marijuana or they were just a little bit late on their curfew, judges may yell at them, but they don't see that as worthy of, of pulling their bond. Record show Mancibo agreed to plead guilty this month. In the agreement, the charge would be reduced to first degree murder and he would be sentenced to 50 years. But it took six years to prosecute this case. The DA's office blames that on factors like Hurricane Harvey and also claims they've been ready to go to trial, but the defense was at the end of the day, it took them six years to prosecute this case. What's your response to the district attorney's office? I think that for a long time, the district attorney's office has been hurting with management. They've been losing a lot of their prosecutors who are senior and experienced. Most people that you see trying capital murder cases now, with a few exceptions, they're trying their very first one. A handwritten note on the plea agreement says his sentencing would increase to 60 years if he didn't show. Given his record, should anyone be surprised that he was a no-show for his sentencing? Courts that allow sentencing dates um, are, are taking a really big leap of faith that the person's going to show up. And speaking of that leap of faith, just minutes before we were going on air, his attorney gave me a call and told me when he pleaded guilty, he asked Judge Anderson, who was assigned to the emergency relief docket, to give his client the weekend to say goodbye to his family before he went in for sentencing. He says the judge signed off on that. He tells me he didn't imagine that his client would ever just be a no-show. He tells me he's embarrassed. He says his client gets what he deserves. And he also says this is disrespectful to the entire justice system.